Now to Greece, where it's been confirmed the Prime Minister's proposed referendum on the latest EU bailout will go ahead. George Papandreou's call shocked EU leaders and sparked chaos on world markets. It even came as a shock to Greeks themselves, with pro-bailout MPs calling for his immediate resignation. The Prime Minister is now due to fly to the G20 meeting in Cannes to explain his actions to the German Chancellor Angela Merkel and the French President Nicolas Sarkozy, the chief sponsors of Greece's financial life support machine. Well, for more on where this now puts the Eurozone, I'm joined live from Toronto. Anthony Wilde is the founder and editor in chief of the dailybell.com uh, well after all that's been done both by Athens and by the EU to keep Greece afloat just why would George Papandreou a staunch euro backer call for a referendum that in all likelihood is going to undo everything well I'm not sure w what the actual personal motivation was that George Papandreou had to make that move but I for one uh, endorse the move I believe that the people of Greece uh, should be the ones who determine their future and, and not the Eurocrats who, who are trying to, to, regain, to gain even more control and centralized power over the various nation states within the EU. So Papandreou, by giving his people at least the opportunity to make a decision for themselves as to whether or not perhaps even they want to remain in the EU, is probably in the best interest of the people of Greece ah, and uh, maybe not welcome so much. At... <laughs> exactly, Ante, I was going to Go ask you, you say let the Greek people make the decision which is in their interest. But of course, that decision is now being seen as one that could, in fact, lead to the collapse of the Eurozone and affect all the Eurozone members. Uh, and I say to that, that's a welcome situation if it happens. I mean, t t the, the Eurozone is, is, a, is a stepping stone towards one world governance. And the fact is, you, you cannot take these various nation states with various cultural backgrounds and, and needs and desires on, a, on an individual level, forget about it on a national level, and expect to wheel, uh, put them all into a, a, a basket and to accept federalized control via Brussels that is in the best interest of the people on a localized level. The Eurozone is, is a plan experiment that is that has come into being since ever since World War II which is all about generating one world power for the money power itself who stands behind the central banks of the world and central banking and the money power that stands behind it is at the root of the eurozone experiment period I, I, I suggest that it would be a wonderful thing if the Greek uh, people were to recognize that they'd be better off getting out of the eurozone but many would say look uh, th this is a global problem countries throughout the world are facing economic crisis but if you look at the past the eurozone has actually been a huge success trade barriers have been dropped people can be employed in various countries around uh, around Europe it had actually has been a success despite what's happening now and what we're seeing is the eurozone itself showing some sort of unity and an effort to keep it all together I don't know how you can call it a success when Greece is bankrupt, Portugal, Spain, Italy, and hush hush France, all these countries are dysfunctionally mismanaged economies, managed being the mismanagement part of the whole equation because you cannot manage an economy, only a free market can govern itself. And these economies are trying, are, are, they're looking for more centralized control. These economic situations that we see today are planned, in my opinion, and I believe that they are planned with the intent to create even more centralization, more regulation and even less civil liberties for the people involved in the, in the respective nations, nations that make up the actual EU. This has nothing, I don't, I don't see how anybody can brand the EU as a success when you have a bankrupt uh, uh, overall uh, uh, conglomerate of nations and you're asking the, those better off to bail out with even more debt, more central banking assistance that is, more money power standing behind the bailouts in order to create more centralized government gov governance. I don't see how that's a, a success at all. I think it's a total failure. Let me just ask you, how is this referendum going to affect the G20 summit tomorrow? Uh, there were high hopes, I understand, that uh, developing nations were looking to help the EU with its crisis. Uh, how willing will they be to help now? Obviously, a lot of eyes turning towards Asia, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, as far as the referendum is concerned, I would, I would look back at what happened in Ireland and uh, what happens when uh, a nation decides to uh, vote negatively against uh, anything that comes out of Brussels uh, or an EU superstate type of uh, solution. I, I believe that the Greeks will be forced into accepting whatever austerity measures uh, or whatever bailout packages are, 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 are dropped in their laps uh, via, via Brussels and the G20. I don't believe that there will be anything more than more chaos, more confusion, which once again leads to to more globalized solutions and certainly within the European superstate itself. Always interesting to hear what you have to say, Anthony. Thanks very much for your time. Anthony Wilde, founder and editor in chief of the DailyBell.com. Thanks for your time.